Hi everyone, I'm Simran and today I'm just going to show you how language and vocabulary is not the only thing that is the most important to pass this Nadi exam. There are various other things that the assessors would be looking at when they're marking your test. So behind me is the list of the codes that are provided to the Nadi assessors to mark your test. And we'll take a look at all of them individually in this video. Okay, so we'll take a look at the accuracy side first of all. Code A is major omissions, basically which means that you have missed some information out of the segment. You have not delivered the full message. Um, and the next one is code B, which is major distortions, which means you have misinterpreted the information. The message you have not delivered in its correct form as it was supposed to be delivered. So you will lose marks if you end up distorting the information. The next one is major unjustified insertions, which means that you have added some information out of your own mind which was not even in the segment so again you will lose marks the next one is code D which means excessive request for repeats basically in this one is that you are allowed one repeat per sec per dialogue and if you do end up taking more than one repeat there is a penalty for it and sometimes you might end up failing the test that you've taken so many repeats now we look at quality of language now for the sake of this video I have combined the codes there are actually 10 codes but I've just mixed them up because English and language other than English, there are two separate codes for each of the languages. So let's take a look at uh, all of them. So first is E and J, which is inappropriate choice of register in English and LOT. Basically what this means is that the words that you've used are informal. You know that when you speak with your friends, you use slang, you use informal words. Those things are not allowed in Nadi exam, so you have to be very formal when you're speaking in exam. The next one is F and K, unidiomatic usage in English and language other than English. Now this code is um, something that people don't understand. Basically what this means is that you are not sounding very natural, you're sounding unnatural. Um, so you have to sound like a native speaker. If, you, if you're using some words and terminology which is not na native-like, you would lose marks. Now the next one is G, L and H and M. Incorrect sentence structure in English and LOT, grammatical errors in English and LOT. These two codes are actually very important and a lot of students um, don't pay attention to these two codes. Now what this means is a lot of the students in Punjabi, they struggle with sentence structure and grammatical errors in English. So most of them do have grammatical errors and they are not able to form sentences in English properly. And on the other side, Hindi students, they struggle with Hindi language they cannot form sentences and they have grammatical errors in Hindi itself so very important and you need to really pay attention on these two errors if you do make them in your speech now the next one is unsatisfactory pronunciation which is basically pretty self-explanatory um, and it's hardly ever the case among students they are pretty good with pronunciation let's take a look at quality of delivery now code O excessive pauses P excessive hesitation and Q excessive self-correction a lot of the students miss a point. They think that if they're using a good vocabulary and they are using right sentence structure and they're you know, not making any omissions or distortion in the information, they will pass the test. Hang on. That's not the case if you have all of these errors in your speech. A lot of students keep thinking about the vocabulary and then they hesitate, they pause. And those things are such a bad impression on the examiner. If you do all of these errors, you, you're not going to pass. So let me give you an example of this. I, I came to, um, uh, I came to uh, Australia in 2010 and um, I came to Australia in 2010 and I, I just came here to know if I, um, if I can get um, Centrelink payments. Now if you watch my speech over there, I had pauses, I had hesitations and I had excessive self-correction where I went on and keep correcting myself again and again. So if you're not fluent in your speech and you are pausing, hesitating, you, you, you will not pass, unfortunately, you are in trouble. So please watch out when you're speaking, you do not have to have all of these sort of things in your speech. You have to sound formal and you have to sound fluent. So maintain your fluency is the most important thing as well to pass this exam. So now that you know about all of these codes, it's really important that you pay attention to all of these. 
You must have seen our results on our Facebook page and the reason why we have the highest results is because we do not just focus on language and vocabulary, we focus on all of these things. If you are preparing for your exam, come in and book for a free trial class and we look forward to helping you out. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again.